addressability, what we've been doing again, a lot of it is centered around uh, testing and, and trialing uh, in the U.S., but also here. Uh, and the idea is we know that TV is really strong for reach. And we know that you know, digital has a real value for targeting and for reaching the right audience. But it's expensive for TV to reach that extra audience. So the power of addressable is combining sort of your broad reach and frequency of TV, but also adding um, some digital metrics to it. So that's really the strength of addressable. And we see this in saying if you have multiple platforms that you're uh, addressing through TV-like experience, use that uh, to make sure that you are addressing your marginal audience or the actual audience that you wouldn't necessarily reach through TV. Uh, and it's very important in the US, we know in Europe that you know, it's going to take some time. Uh, in the UK, it's already in place with Atomar and others. But in the rest of Europe, it's going to take time. But we're definitely seeing a lot of traction with operators and broadcasters wanting to kick things off and, 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 and getting going. So you know that one of the missions of Freewheel and our kind of announced mission statement that we've been doing for the past few years has been offering TV a way to defend itself against you know, some of the digital uh, digital players. And one of the ways that really you know, TV needs to realize is the power of reach. And so what we've been trying to do, and really pushing TV to do, is really unify linear and digital strengths. So that they can really make the best of both worlds. So if you think about it, Digital is really powerful uh, and it's really strong in terms of its uh, flexibility, its dynamism, its dynamic allocation. TV is you know, a much older system, uh, less flexibility. But then when you start to bring some of the techniques of digital into TV, it all of a sudden becomes very powerful. So some of the trials that we've been doing in the US on various POCs is to bring the TV schedule into a digital environment and vice versa really brings the strength of digital into TV. So it's been a very powerful uh, exercise for us in the last three months. We were trying that in the, in the US at the moment. So sports is a very interesting uh, area because it's obviously a very premium event. One that is, such as the World Cup, very often, often watched on another device but still live. So it has all the uh, concept of TV, all the makings of TV, yet it's on a different device. And you know, you know that advertising during the World Cup is very premium, so broadcasters are very keen to keep that same experience. So they need to mirror, in a way, the experience that one would have on linear on a digital device. So by matching or by offering the ability to a broadcaster to match its TV schedule onto a digital device and make sure that one looks at the inventory in a holistic fashion and that the broadcaster can really um, you know, sell its inventory across both platforms without having to struggle between silos is very important. The World Cup was a very, uh, very good example. We had five broadcasters running over five million impressions during the, the tournament and really using the power of our uh, linear unification tools uh, to make sure that their streaming experience was as comparable as TV across all screens. So yeah, the five, so the World Cup we worked with uh, NBC, Fox in the US, RTE, Mediaset, and TF1 uh, in Europe.